Antec, a veteran in the PC case market, has been catering to budget-minded builders for almost as long as I can remember. They produce some of the most popular affordable cases out there, such as the Antec 300, which has garnered a cult following among enthusiasts. Today, Antec continues its legacy of providing a variety of affordable PC cases, ranging from simple designs to the coveted tempered glass and RGB options that gamers nowadays crave. Enter the new AX90, a mid-tower ATX case designed for optimal airflow with its open front panel, four pre-installed fans, and right side cooling support. But to keep the cost under $100, Antec made some cuts and emissions. Are these trade-offs worth it? Let's dive into the specs and features, see what fits and what doesn't, conduct some thermal testing, and take a look at my build notes. I'll give you the pros and cons, the whole nine yards, and wrap up with my final thoughts on the Antec AX90. Let's do this. It's the money. The AX90 measures 473 millimeters deep by 210 millimeters wide by 486 millimeters tall. The case is compatible with mini ITX, micro ATX, and ATX motherboards, can accommodate CPU coolers up to 160 millimeters, graphics cards up to 385 millimeters, and ATX power supplies up to 220 millimeters long with the drive cage installed or up to 410 millimeters without it. The case comes with four 120 millimeter RGB fans, three in the front and one rear mounted. In addition, the case can accommodate two 140 millimeter front fans, three 120 or two 140 millimeter top mounted fans and two 120 millimeter side mounted fans. The radiator or AIO support includes up to a 360 millimeter top or front mounted and up to a 240 side mounted. There's 23 millimeters of space behind the motherboard tray and multiple tie down points for cable management. There's a removable drive cage for two 3.5 inch hard drives or one and one 2.5 inch SSD. There's also two mounting locations for additional 2.5 SSDs. There's also a SATA powered RGB hub that can support up to six three pin RGB fans or devices. The front IO includes power and reset buttons, a combo headphone mic jack, two USB 2 type A ports, one 10 gigabit type C port, and an LED selection button. The left tempered glass and right steel side panels are secured with thumb screws. The front panel is plastic and pulls off revealing a permanently attached mesh filter. There's also a magnetic top filter and a bottom PSU filter. The overall build quality and materials are fair to poor. The case is constructed from thin 23 gauge steel. With the panels removed, the chassis has a lot of overall flex. The front panel is also very thin injection molded plastic with obvious molding imperfections. The mesh used for the filters is very dense and severely restricts airflow. The panels are secured with plastic sleeved screws and all have been over tightened. One was so tight it stripped the threads in the case. The PCIe expansion slots have break-off style covers and there are no replacement covers or even screws of any kind provided for the PCIe expansions. The ventilation area of the right panel is significantly undersized and combined with the restrictive filter won't provide adequate intake or exhaust airflow if using a side mounted AIO or fans. This will result in recirculation of the heated air inside the case. The tempered glass side panel is very robust at four millimeters thick. However, there are no top or bottom tabs, so be sure to keep your hand under the panel when removing or installing it, as it will fall as soon as it slides past the front groove. Moving on to my build notes, while I didn't have any significant issues installing my air cool test system, there are some restrictions to keep in mind when planning a build in the AX90. First, my 158 millimeter tower cooler is on the shorter side when it comes to cooling modern CPUs and it just barely fits, so you'll need to consider the 160 millimeter cooler height restriction. If you plan to go with AIO or water cooling, there are also some restrictions to consider. First, there shouldn't be any problems with a single AIO. The LS720 is the longest 360 mil AIO I own, and while it was a tight fit, it did fit. And with 60 millimeters of top clearance for the VRM and 85 millimeters for the RAM, you shouldn't have any hardware clearance issues. There's even 75 millimeters of clearance for the side mounted 240 millimeter radiator. However, you will be restricted to a 240 or 280 front AIO if using a 360 top rad or vice versa, 240 top, 360 front. Also, if using any size front radiator, while it can fit side mounted standard 25 
75 millimeter thick fans on the right side, radiator won't fit. So no front and side radiator at the same time, not that's even a recommended configuration. Also, in addition to the total thickness of a front mounted radiator or AIO, subtracting from the maximum graphics card length, if your graphics card is longer than 250 millimeters, you can't use a side mounted AIO. I couldn't even get a standard 25 mil thick fan behind my card. You have to go with slim fans like the Inwin Mercuries, for example. Other than that, you do need to remember to break off the PCIe covers you'll be using before installing your motherboard as you can damage it if you try to break them off after. I've scraped SMDs right off a board before. Also, be sure to check which ports you need to remove first because there are no replacement covers provided. You also want to be careful screwing things into the case from the panels as it's easy to strip out the threads to the fans. Not only is the case easily damaged by the fan screws, but the fan screws provided have a thin head and can easily punch through the case if over tightened. Speaking of screws, the case doesn't come with a lot of the necessary ones. There are no PCIe slot screws, so if you don't have bins full of case screws hanging around, you'll be forced to borrow at least one of the power supply screws to secure your graphics card. There are fan mounting locations on the top of the PSU shroud, and a fan in the frontmost slot could be beneficial in redirecting some of the intake air from the bottom front fan from under the shroud back into the GPU. However, there are none of the long screws you would need to mount those fans here. I had to borrow some from one of my AIOs because fans don't generally come with these. Finally, there was plenty of room for cable management behind the motherboard tray, but again, the case only came with about three zip ties. However, my PSU had some Velcro straps I was able to use. The RGB fan hub is a nice extra on this case, and it worked well. There are six 3-pin 5-volt ARGB connections, so you have two extras available for additional RGB devices. There's a good number of preset colors and patterns to scroll through, and it can be connected to a 3-pin motherboard ARGB header for motherboard control. Notably missing from the I.O., however, is a high-speed USB-C port. This is definitely an option that's becoming more prevalent even at this price point, especially now that even lower end motherboards are including the connection for it. Now let's find out if all the potential airflow adds up to better cooling performance. But first, this is the point in the video where most creators insert their sponsor spot. However, this channel is completely independent and I have zero sponsors. The only support I have is you, the viewer. So if you appreciate this content at all, be sure to click that like. It really does help. And as always, please consider subscribing. The larger the audience, the more content I'm able to deliver. Okay, back to the review. I installed my standard test system in the AX90 and ran the ADA64 stress test for CPU and VRM temps and a 20 minute port royal loop for GPU temps. I'm comparing the Antec to a couple of other ATX cases I've reviewed recently and we see that the Antec CPU temps are only one or two degrees lower than the Height Y40, which is not an air cooling case and has the graphics card exhausting hot hair directly into the CPU cooler. The GPU temps come in just under the extra fan height config. However, if we remove the front panel, CPU temps fall by three degrees and GPU temps drop by two and a half degrees. This isn't a huge difference on its own. However, I was also able to maintain those lower temps while also lowering the max case fan RPM from 100 to just 80%. Again, this is due to the very restrictive filter mesh used. And while I didn't test other configurations, you will have similar results with the side intake. Considering to get any intake through the small ventilation area on the right panel, you need to remove the filter. There's also the ability to just brute force the cooling. This case supports up to nine fans, 11 if you count the shroud fans. That gives you a lot of options. For a gaming system, a top mounted 360 AIO with five intake fans on the front and side, the rear fan and maybe a fan on the shroud to redirect some air directly into the graphics card, and you can have a pretty cool system. You can even do a 240 side AIO, the three front fans and some top exhaust fans. The point is, there are a lot of cooling possibilities over the stock configuration. Also, on the positive side, the four included fans are pretty quiet at only 45 decibels at max RPM, and at idle, they're virtually silent. I typically have to disable this rear fan to help with audio in this shot setup, but I didn't need to for this case. 
Time for my final thoughts on this case, and weighing the pros and cons of this case wasn't easy. There were some great features to consider, such as four included fans, an RGB controller, and multiple cooling options that could potentially provide really good airflow. However, we can't ignore the significant strikes against it, such as the poor build quality and materials, and the omission of simple things like enough screws. However, I believe it balances out in the end, making the price point of $90 fair. Personally, I wouldn't choose this case based on its build quality alone. As someone who constantly tinkers with my systems, I'm not sure it could stand up to being worked in all the time. One of the two TG panel screw holes is already stripped after all. The only case I've recently seen constructed from thinner steel is the Aza Legionnaire. However, if you're someone who builds a computer once and that's how it stays and you appreciate the styling, then this case could work well for an entry level to mid range build. Regardless of your decision, I would strongly recommend modifying or replacing the filter material for better cooling performance. If you have any questions about the Antec AX90, be sure to let me know by leaving a comment, and I'll see you in the next one.